Line L1 passes through these two points. Line L2 passes through these two points. Notice the A. We have to calculate the value or values of A that make the two lines parallel or make the two lines perpendicular. Well, if they're parallel, then one is a multiple of the other. And we're talking there about the direction vectors. Let's try it. Um, normally I would call my direction vectors A and B. Here I'm going to call them B and C. And the reason I'm going to call them B and C is because I've got an A in here. So I'm going to try and avoid confusion. So direction of L1 is given by vector B, what we'll call B, and it's these subtracted. It's 4 minus 1, 3 minus negative 2, negative 2 minus 4. Now be careful with the textbook version. They've got a different set of answers because although they write 4 here, when they actually try to calculate with it, they change that 4 into a 5. I'm going to use 4 here. If you want to see what happens with a 5, go and look at the textbook. Um, this vector is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5, and negative 2 take 4 is negative 6. And the direction of L2, we're going to call C, is this point minus this one. A minus 3, negative 2 take away 8, 10 take away negative 2. Which is A minus 3 can't change, negative 2 take 8 is negative 10, and 10 plus 2 is 12. Okay, if they're parallel, then one is a multiple of the other. So, if parallel, C must be some constant times B. If we work with each component, sorry, this way, each component, then I should be able to work out a value for K. I'll get three different equations. First, let's look at the X coordinate. A minus 3 is k times 3, which is 3k. This doesn't help me yet. I don't yet know what k is. So let's look at the other coordinates. Negative 10 is 5k, k times this one. That's good. I can find a value for k. And the third one, make sure it's the same, 12 is negative 6k. Now both of these will give me the same value for k, negative 2. And that's good. If I plug that value for k in here, I'm going to get um, a minus 3, 3 times negative 2, may as well write it, a minus 3 is negative 6, a is negative 6 plus 3. A must be negative 3. Notice there was no possibility for A to be anything else here. Although the question asked for value or values, there's actually only one value that can work. Let's try B. What value of A makes the lines perpendicular? Well, if they're perpendicular, then the dot product of these two vectors must be zero. If perpendicular, b dot c uh, must be equal to zero. Now, I've written it there because I'm going to do lots of expanding over here. Uh, I'm just going to copy these two vectors down. Uh, sorry, I don't think you're going to quite be able to see all of it. Uh, let me have a look. Um, 3, 5, negative 6, dot product with a minus 3, negative 10, 12. Now they're component vectors, so that's easy for me to do the dot product. It's 3, a minus 3, 
plus 5 times 10 is negative 50, plus negative 6 times 12 is minus 72. Expand the brackets, 3a take 9, take 50, take 72. 3a, let's work this number out. Make sure I don't make any mistakes. 9 plus 50, missed my sign, plus 50, plus 72, 131, minus 131. So 3a is 131. A must be 131 over 3. And again, like with A, there's no option here for A to be anything else. There's only one possible value. See, the vector could go in either direction, but because um, like perpendicular to these two vectors could be up or could be down, but because these two components are fixed, that determines the direction that A has to go. So there's still only one possible value for A.